Hello, my name is Noah Elkreef, and today I'm going to talk about how to deal with depression. Or, more accurately, I'm going to help you to stop feeling depressed. Or at least I'm going to try. But what I'm going to do in this video is not teach you something, or give you more knowledge, or give you something to practice. I'm going to um, show you help you discover for yourself that the cause of your depression isn't true. So that won't make much sense right now, but hopefully by the end of the video, not only will that make sense, but you will be feeling uh, a significant amount of relief or, or much more uh, peaceful. So if that interests you, if you want to give that a shot, you're welcome to keep watching. So, the first thing is, when we feel depressed, we tend to have the uh, phrasing of it, the terminology of, I am depressed. I am clinically depressed. I am depressed. I have this type of depression. I am severely depressed. I am depressed. But is that true? You are depressed? That's who you are? Let's just look at that. You are depressed. What is depression? Not in theory, not some idea that you were taught, but if you are depressed right now, what is it right now? How do you feel right now? What's going on with you right now? Well, there's a set of feelings. You may feel pressure in your chest, a feeling in your stomach. You may feel sad. You may feel lonely. You may feel worthless. You may feel unworthy, unlikable, insufficient, lacking, ashamed, no energy, no motivation, no will to do anything, something along those lines. So what you have in this moment is a feeling or a set of feelings, right? a combination of feelings. That's what you have right now. It's not that you are depressed, you are experiencing a set of feelings. That's what's going on, right? If you get cancer, it's not as though you are cancer. You have it. You have the feelings associated with cancer. You have the internal uh, mechanisms going on with the cancer, right? But it's not that that's who you are. It's the same thing with depressed. You may think you are always depressed, but there are moments when you're not. Before you had it, for one, you were you before you were depressed. It may seem like a different you, but something was the same. Now you are still you. There are different feelings going on, but you are you. And even now that you claim to be depressed, right, or you have these set of feelings that we can call depression, they are not there in every moment most likely. They may be, but probably not. There are probably some moments throughout your week where you forget about depression, or the thoughts that create depression don't come up. Right? And times when you enjoy yourself, maybe playing a sport, dancing, watching a little kid smile, playing, watching your favorite TV show, eating your favorite food. For a second, there's no depression. So, you are always you, but the feeling comes and goes. It may come more often than it goes, but still, there are moments when it's not here. So, depression is not who you are. It is simply a feeling, maybe a very strong feeling, right? but it is a feeling that you experience rather than who you are. And that distinction is very important because as long as you think, I am depressed, there's nothing you can do about it. But when you recognize it's a feeling that I experience, then we can begin to investigate that feeling a little bit. So, the next element we're going to look at is this idea that depression means something about who you are. In other words, once we have these feelings that we label depression, the next thought that tends to pop up in our head is, there's something wrong with me because I'm depressed. I am bad because I'm depressed. I am weak or stupid because I'm depressed. Being depressed signifies something about me. Right? But, if you are walking down the street and someone throws a rock at your back when you're not looking, you're just walking down the street, and then you feel a pain in your back. You turn around, you don't know who it was. 
right? and you feel a pain in your back, are you going to blame yourself for that pain? Are you going to think that pain, that feeling in your back, signifies something about who you are? No, of course not. That pain, that's a feeling in your back, a feeling in your body, but it doesn't signify anything about you. Why doesn't it signify anything about you? Why doesn't it mean you're weak? Why doesn't it mean you're stupid? Why doesn't it mean you're bad in some way? Simply because you recognize, I am not to blame for this feeling. And you recognize that because you had no control over whether this, a feeling, whether this feeling came to you or not. So the reason why you feel bad about yourself for being depressed, or are ashamed for being depressed, is simply because you believe you are to blame for it. That somehow you control whether you're depressed or not. And if you can't control it, that means something's wrong with you. So what creates depression? Thoughts. That's it. Thoughts. You see? It may seem like something more, and if you believe that, that's fine. I'm just going to present it in a slightly different way than you may have heard before, or maybe drastically different way, and you might come to a new conclusion. You might not. Either way, allow yourself to be open to the possibility that it is created by thoughts. So, normally, when we go throughout our day, it seems like we just have that feeling of depression always. But, in any moment that you're distracted from thoughts, right, there's no feeling. The feeling is gone in any moment that we're distracted from thoughts. Situation can't create, a situation can't create depression, because in some moments that that situation is the same, the depression won't be there. You forget about it. Our appearance can't create depression, because in some moments that we have the same appearance, there's no depression. Right? But in any moment that you stop and then think about what's wrong with you, and about what's bad in your life, and about how bad your situation is, all of a sudden there'll be feelings rapidly arising. Right? I mean, just take a moment now to think about how bad your life is and how bad something is wrong with you, or whatever story tends to be going on in your mind all the time, on repeat, that corresponds with a certain feeling in your body. Notice how as soon as the thought pops up, as soon as you give attention to that story, feelings occur, depression occurs. Right? So, when we believe stories in our mind, when we give attention to these negative stories about ourselves and our life, it creates depression. So, depression only means something about you if you have control over these thoughts and whether you believe them and give attention to them. But, do you pick what thoughts enter your mind? Take a moment to really look. Not what you were trained to believe. I control my thoughts. I can make them good. Look at your actual direct experience. Do you pick what thoughts enter your mind? If you did, why would you put negative thoughts there? Ultimately, all you want is peace. That's what you want to be happy. So if negative thoughts keep coming up, you must not pick them. Look, do you go into a bucket and say, I'd like to put that thought, I'm terrible. Then I'd like to put that thought, I'm unworthy. No. They just show up. Look right now. What's the next thought to pop up in your head? Did you pick it? Did you make an effort to put it there? Or did it just show up? You don't pick what thoughts enter your mind. Nobody does. I don't. I never met anyone in all of my sessions or in all the emails that I ever got that someone who picks the thoughts that enter their mind. Nobody controls that. Then, when a thought enters your mind, the next stage is we believe it. You see? We automatically believe every thought that enters our mind. If you had control over whether you believed thoughts that enter your mind, you just wouldn't believe the negative ones. Because they create suffering. Obviously, you don't control that. And then, we give attention to them. Right? Maybe that comes before believing, depending. But we keep giving attention once we believe a thought. You see, we keep giving attention to the same stories over and over, right? Every time you're just sitting there eating by yourself, or going uh, for a walk, or sitting in your car, or right before, you, when you're lying in bed ready to go to sleep, you tell the same stories over and over again in your head, right? Why do you keep giving attention to the same stories? It doesn't mean anything about you. You can't stop that. If you could, you would just stop giving attention to all those stories that create suffering. 
It's not up to you. You don't pick that. You may want to think, I have the power, I can do it. But what's the truth? What's your direct experience? If you're watching this video, your direct experience is that you can't because you feel depressed. Obviously, you're giving attention to stories that are creating suffering. So, if you don't control what thoughts pop up in your mind, if you don't control whether you believe them or not, if you don't control whether you give attention to them or not, then you're not to blame for the feelings they create. You're not to blame for the depression it creates. Depression signifies nothing about you. Nothing at all. It doesn't signify that you're weak or stupid. I meet plenty of people with strong intellects or weak intellects that are feeling depressed. I meet people who are successful or failures, according to society, more or less money, who feel depressed. I meet people who are loved by many who are depressed, or people who don't have anyone who are depressed, people who are married with kids, people who are single. There is no indication of worth that corresponds with depression. Nothing. Depression doesn't mean anything about you. All it means is that you're believing a thought and giving attention to a thought that is negative. That is all. So it doesn't mean anything about you. It doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. Nothing. So, now that we see that you are not depressed, it's just a feeling, and then we see that depression is created by thoughts and that you are not to blame for them, it means that you are bad, you are weak or missing something because you're depressed. The next thing we have to look at is whether these thoughts that we're telling ourselves are true. Okay? So, when we have these thoughts, right, so putting them into two categories, we have my situation is bad and something about me is bad. That's, broadly speaking, the two stories that go on in our head that can create depression. Okay? So, if I say there's something wrong with me and I feel depressed, it seems as though the feeling of depression proves that there really is something wrong with me. I'll say that again, okay? So I think there's something wrong with me, I'm missing something, right? I'm lacking, I'm, I'm not good enough. And then I also simultaneously have a feeling of worthlessness and depression. And it seems as though my feeling of worthlessness, my feeling of depression, signifies that my thought, I am worthless, must be true. But I'm here to tell you that is not the case at all. Just because you have a feeling, it doesn't signify that, that there's anything in reality that makes it true. Okay? So let me give you an example of what I mean. If you're sitting uh, out, out to eat, let's say, and a friend calls you up and says to you, your house is burning down right now, and you believe them, what are you going to feel? Well, you might feel afraid, sad, angry, confused, all these really, really strong emotions right? But then imagine in the next second he says to you, just joking, <laughs> how are you going to feel then? Huge relief, boom. You might then start to feel angry, and why'd you do that? But before that comes into play, or after that comes into play, you're going to feel huge relief. No more sadness, no more anger, no more frustration, no more fear. You just, that fe those feelings are completely gone, right? So what occurred in that situation? What would occur? Well, when you believed the words, your house burned down, you immediately had a feeling. That feeling wasn't created by your house burning down, because your house isn't burning down. The feeling does not signify that there's something in reality burning. It signifies that you believed words to be true. You see? The same is true with the words in our mind, our thoughts. When we believe them to be true, they create emotions. When we don't believe them, they stop creating emotions. As you can see with this example, as soon as you recognize his words weren't true, when he said, I'm joking, immediate relief occurred. Right? Not because your house stopped burning down, but because it never did burn down. Right? Just because you recognize the words weren't true. I'll give you another example. If someone comes up to you and says, the world is going to end tomorrow, and you believe them, how are you going to feel? Well, you feel afraid, sad, angry, something like that. 
But if the same, if a different person came to you, or the same person came to you and said the world is going to end tomorrow, but you didn't believe their words, how would you feel? Nothing. In both situations, you heard the exact same words, but when you believe those words to be true, they create emotions, and when you don't believe those words to be true, they create nothing. The same is true with the words in our mind, our thoughts. So when you believe there's something wrong with me, it creates the feeling of worthlessness or depression. Right? When you believe there's something wrong with my life, my life is bad, lacking, wrong, you create the feeling of worthlessness and depression. You see, the, the first comes thought, then comes believing the thought, then comes the feeling. It's not as though the feeling comes first, I feel worthless, and then a thought pops up that says, oh, I feel worthless, that must mean I am. First comes the thought, then comes the feeling. You see? So the feeling doesn't prove you are worthless. The feeling proves that you're believing a thought that says I'm worthless. It doesn't mean you are worthless. Just because a thought says there's something wrong with you, that doesn't mean there is something wrong with you, okay? So in other words, I, just put, I don't know if that was easy to follow or hard to follow, but put simply, a feeling does not prove that a thought is true. Okay? A feeling, an emotion, depression, worthlessness, does not prove that a thought is true. Because a feeling is only created by believing a thought is true. Okay? So, next we have to look at, are these thoughts true? Are these thoughts that I have about myself and my life true? Well, so like we said, there's kind of two categories, which is my situation is bad, and something about me is bad. So first let's look at my situation is bad, something's wrong with it. So when we say that, we're saying it based on our own unique set of experiences in life and what we've been taught about what is good and bad. So the first question to ask yourself, so what we're going to do is I'm going to pose questions to you to help you discover for yourself that your situation might not be as bad as you thought. Okay. So, is it possible that there are other people in the world that could think your situation is actually really good? Right, so maybe you live in an apartment, but you think that's bad because you should be living in a house. But could some people in the world think it's amazing that you live in an apartment that has electricity and light? Or maybe you have a sickness, but could other people with different sickness think, you're so lucky that you have that one instead? I mean, just think about it. You may think you're going through something really bad, but ask yourself, would I consider this to be bad on like a global scale, on the real genuine scale of good to bad in terms of how I see good and bad? You might realize it's not as bad as you thought. Another way to recognize that your situation might not be that bad is to simply look at cause and effect a little more closely. So, if you get fired from your job, what are you going to think? Is that good or bad? Well, it seems obvious. That's obviously bad. But is it possible that if you get fired from your job, a couple weeks later, you meet someone that gives you a job that was much closer aligned to what you really like doing and what you're really good at, and you become much more happy in this new job? Is that possible? Of course that's possible. If you get that job and you're much happier, then a couple of years later someone asks you, was it good or bad that you got fired? You're going to say, it was good for my life that I got fired from my last job. So when you make the declaration, the decision, the conclusion that what happened to me was bad, or this is bad, you're unknowingly saying, I know the future. I know what all the millions of effects are of this particular event, situation, outcome, and they all add up to being bad for my life. But you don't know that to be true. Look, can you think of some potential good effects that could come from your current situation or from an event that happened? Look, really try it out. Can I think? Is it possible? Is it possible that this situation could lead me to more happiness? Could lead me to uh, something good that I want? Of course it can. You have to be willing to really be honest with yourself that it's possible. Right? 
Another way to look at this is, so when we have situations that we don't like, a lot of the times it's because we've been trained by how we should live, right? So in some societies in, in America, let's say in the Northeast where I'm from, from New York, they think you should be successful, you should fulfill your potential, you should live in, own your own house by a certain age, you should get married and have kids by a certain age. Right? So then if you don't have that by a certain age or you don't meet what you should, how you should be living, then you feel insufficient and lacking and ashamed and maybe depressed. Right? But can you ask yourself, is it possible that other people in a different place could think, I should live very differently? So in other places, they may think, it's crazy to pursue success. Do what you love. In other places, like for instance, in down south, they think you should get married at a younger age. In New York, they think you should get married at an older age. In other societies, they may think you shouldn't get married at all. Right? Or you should live in a big house. But in other societies, they may think, no, you should live in a cabin, or you should live in just what you need, and why have all the excess and extra power and extra energy being expended? I don't know. So it's not that you should live life a certain way. It's simply a way, right? It's not that you should live life this way. That is a way to live life. It is not better or worse than any other way to live life. Okay? Another thing is we, we have this idea that, right, we have this idea that one way to live is better than another. But it's not. They're just different. It's not better or worse. That doesn't exist in reality. One person might think it's better, another worse. How you're living, what's you're going on in your situation isn't bad, it just is. Good and bad are ideas being superimposed onto the facts. But they're just concepts. Everyone has a different idea. And it's all based on how we were trained, on what society we were raised in. And it's also based on not knowing the future, but thinking that we do. We know all the effects of what's going to happen. So the next thing is looking at ourselves. So we think there's something bad about us. There's something bad about me. Right? I am not attractive. I am not successful. I am not likable. I am not worthy. So the first thing I'm going to ask you is, can you think of a few reasons? Well, first actually, look to see what you think is bad about yourself. Why you're depressed. Look to see what you think is bad about who you are. What is it? What comes up for you? What's wrong with you? What is bad about you? Now, let me ask you, can you think of a few reasons or examples about why the opposite might be true? So you think your body is unattractive. Can you think of a few examples of things you like about your body? You may think you're unlikable, but can you think of a few examples of times when you were likable, or a few reasons about why you are. If you think that you're not successful or whatever, you can think of a few reasons why you maybe are successful. See if you can come up with a few reasons as to why the opposite is true, could be true. See, because if you can recognize that the opposite could be true, then you might realize, it's, I don't know that I'm unattractive, I don't know that I'm not funny. I don't know that I'm unlikable. I don't know that I'm unworthy. I don't know. Maybe I am worthy. I can come up with a few reasons why I might be. Another thing to look at is to ask yourself, could other people think the opposite is true? So we may not like uh, our body. Maybe we have extra weight, right? Well, some societies, some cultures, some perspectives Right? would be they like more weight. Some like skinnier, some like heavier. Some like darker skin, some like lighter skin. Some, pe some guys want girls who are successful, some want girls who are, uh, have a job that works less hours. Some girls want someone that is really high powered and some want one that's more vulnerable and nice. Everybody wants something different. Everybody's attracted to something different depending on where they're from, their unique set of experiences, all that stuff. So just ask yourself, could somebody else, maybe in a different society, maybe something different than I'm used to, think the opposite that I think about myself? Is that possible? 
If it is, how do I know my opinion is somehow true? It's just a perspective. It's not real. It's not true. You see? The last thing, and perhaps the most important thing, that I want to explain is simply that we confuse what we want with what we think will get us what we want. So let me ask you a question. What is the number one most important thing in your life? What do you want more than anything else in your life? Number one, what do you want most? What do you want to get, achieve, acquire, feel, whatever? Take a moment and really look for yourself. Try to answer that question. What is number one most important thing that I hope to have, feel, get in my life? Do. Well, different people have different ideas. Some people want success, wealth, relationship, love, right? Different things like that. But, what I'd like to offer is that you don't really want success, wealth, love, relationship, marriage, kids, to fulfill a purpose, to fulfill potential. That is not what you want most. What you really want more than anything else is to be at peace, to feel happy, to be okay with yourself, to be content, to feel whole, to feel sufficient. That's what we want most. But don't take my word for it. Look for yourself. Whatever answer you came up with, like success or wealth or love or relationship, if I give you two options, okay, get what you want, but be guaranteed to be unhappy, or two, not get what you want, but be, have the incredible peace and happiness you want, which would you choose? For most of us, it's very clear that if I had the choice of getting what I want and being incredibly unhappy, or not getting what I want and being incredibly happy, we choose not getting what we want. And what that shows us is simply that you never wanted what you want. That was the means to get to happiness. What you genuinely, really, ultimately want is peace and happiness. And each one of us were taught different ideas about what will get it for us. Right? So you don't want success. You want to be happy. And someone taught you somewhere along the way, success will make you happy. You don't want a family. You want to be happy. And somewhere along the way, someone said, you can't be happy unless you have a family. That's why, what you live for. If you don't have a family, you're a waste of life. You have to fulfill your potential. If you don't fulfill your potential, you'll always feel worthless and lacking. But those are ideas. All you want is peace, and you just have an idea that those things will give you peace. You see, we confuse the means with the goal. To make that more clear, you may think, I really want ice cream. You get in a moment, I want ice cream, I want chocolate, I just want it so bad. But you don't want chocolate, you don't want ice cream, you want the feeling you hope it will give you. If you could find something else that would give you a better feeling, you would choose that. You see, we get confused between what we want and what we think we will get from what we want. So, what is that? What's the relevance to depression? Well, you may think it's bad that I don't have success. Okay? But, what you really want is peace, remember? So, if it's bad that you don't have success, what you're really saying is success can make me happy, and it's bad that I don't have success because I can't be happy like this. But can success make you happy? Well, what makes you unhappy? Thoughts. Thoughts create thoughts about the past create sadness, uh, resentment, guilt. Thoughts about right now create shame, depression, loneliness. Thoughts about the future create anxiety, fear. Thoughts about others create judgment, anger. Thoughts about others' opinions create worry. The only thing that ever made you unhappy in any moment in your entire life was thoughts. That's it. So if you want something, success, love, marriage, kids, fulfillment, uh, or fulfilling your goals, <laughs> something like that, if you want one of those things, the easy way to tell whether it will make you happy is to simply ask, can it delete 
all of the thoughts that make me unhappy? Can it eliminate all the thoughts that make me unhappy? Or even a decent chunk of them? And the answer is always no. No matter what you achieve out there, it's not going to get rid of your insecurities, your shame, your guilt, your worry about others' opinions, your fear about losing what you have, your fear of not getting what you want, your fear about not being good enough, all that other stuff. And that's what makes you unhappy. So, look at what you think is bad about your life that makes you depressed. And then ask yourself, does that mean I can't be happy? If you live in an apartment, does that mean you can't be happy? No. Because thoughts make you unhappy, not living in an apartment. Thoughts make you unhappy, not, not living in an apartment. Being in an apartment doesn't make you unhappy. Being in a small place, being in a certain job. Job doesn't have the ability to make you unhappy or happy. Whatever trait you have that you think is terrible, right? You're just too boring, you're too small, you're too fat, you're too uh, stupid, you're too something. But none of those things create unhappiness. When you think about it, all of a sudden you feel depressed. But when you don't think about it, you don't feel anything. It's not that having certain features in our face makes us happy. Because that doesn't eliminate insecurities, fears, worries, any of that type of stuff. You are at no disadvantage whatsoever in being happy. Because nothing about who you are, right? is bad or wrong. It's just thoughts that create unhappiness. Nothing about your, your attributes, your traits, your characteristics, the way you act, uh, your job, your living situation, none of that creates unhappiness, only thoughts. Getting what you think is so perfect, getting everything that you want, can't give you what you want. Peace. Getting what you want can't give you what you want. Peace. Getting what you want can't eliminate all the thoughts that make you feel depressed. Can't. It's impossible. You see, you are at no disadvantage for being in peace. You, just like the person who has the dream job and the looks that you think are wonderful. Those people, in order to be happy, they have to eliminate the thoughts in their head. They have to look at what they are and disbelieve them and recognize they're not real or true in order to be happy. You have to do the same thing. The process for you to become happy is the same as the other people. I deal with all different types of people. The people who you would think who are, are depressed and all this other stuff or who have lives that they think are successful or unsuccessful, failure or not, lovable or not. Everybody, I speak to everyone. And everyone goes through the exact same process. Look at what thoughts are creating your unhappiness and then recognize they're not true. You're at no disadvantage. You may think I'm at a disadvantage because I'm depressed. Maybe they're a little happier. But, but, I have wonderful news for you. Oftentimes, the people that are most depressed are the people that end up with the most peace. Why? Because it opens you up. You see? It opens you up. When you're depressed, you recognize, to some extent, I failed at getting happy. I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to make myself happy. I give up. You see? And then you become more open to discovering what's true. So, being depressed might be the greatest gift you ever got to make you happy, to give you peace. I've seen it happen too many times to discount that, to say, oh, it's so bad that you're depressed. When I see someone depressed, I don't see that's bad and feel bad for them. I see, oh, maybe they'll end up in peace. I don't know. I don't see anything. I'm just here with you. You see, I have no idea whether it's good or bad for your life. But I've seen so many times it ends up helping someone to have more peace. You see? So, whatever is going on in your life, whatever experience you have, whatever situation, whatever your looks are, whatever, anything, ask yourself, is it possible that this is giving me an experience I need to help me discover something that ultimately leaves me in peace? You see that? Is it possible that this, what I'm going through, can give me something Help me recognize something. Help me discover something that leaves me in peace. Because the only thing that leaves us in peace is discovering that the thoughts in our head aren't real or true. That's it. That's all. So, I think that's all I'm going to say in this video. I hope it made sense. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you feel some relief. But if not, that's okay. And I'm sorry, I guess. So...
Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye. Hello again. If you found my video helpful or you enjoyed it, I welcome you to click on one of the videos below as you might find them helpful as well. Or, if you want to make sure you never miss another video of mine again, you can click the subscribe button over there. And if you want my free ebook, you're welcome to click the free ebook button over there. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you around. Bye.